no renter has ever loaded up Instagram, saw a realtor dancing <laughs> about why renting is worse than owning, and then decided to call a realtor and to buy a house. Yeah. That's it. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Sean and Matt Show. My name is Matt. That is Sean, and welcome to our show. Sean, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about Airbnb-friendly apartments. We're going to be talking about what someone on 90 Day Fiance, I can't believe 90 Day Fiance has made it to The Sean and Matt Show, the That's collaboration crazy. that you you never knew that you you didn't need. We're not collaborating. The 90 Day Fiance person is not going to be on here, but we are commenting on what they said because the person went from being a balloon artist to being a realtor because apparently that's what you can do. It's pretty easy to do, right? Do you say you watch 90 Day Fiance? That was being sarcastic. Have you ever seen an episode? No. Have you ever I will seen not a, watch it. Have you ever seen a clip of an episode? Yeah, yeah. So you, you get the gist. I get the gist. Then we're also going to be getting into in or out, whether Sean Battle is in or out on three properties around the world. Sean, let's start with Airbnb friendly apartments. Airbnb has just teamed up with large companies throughout the United States. Think equity, think UDR, think Graystar management. These are not, you know, 16 unit, 12 unit here. These are major apartment buildings and, a car and REITs throughout the United States to provide and partner with um, uh, tenants being able to rent out apartments. So where you used to you know, only be able to do Airbnb, short-term rentals, if you own a property, or you know, before you comment or say anything, you can also do lease arbitrage, where essentially you get the landlord's agreement to sublet the property, and sometimes you don't get the landlord's agreement and you still sublet the property. Now, Everyone's on board. Airbnb is on board. The apartment Crazy. company is on board. The the tenant is on board. So Sean, um, you know, clearly I see the benefit for Airbnb. I think I see the benefit for the apartment company, and I think I see the benefit for the renter. But what are your thoughts on Airbnb friendly apartments? I love it. I, I think, you know, renters rent for specific reasons, right? I mean, there's a lot of reasons that renters are renters and stay renters. But one thing that they can't do while they're renting is, is make some money off of that, that property that they're renting because, you know, like you said, these big corporations own these, these, these units and they have things in their leases that say, hey, you can't sublet or you can't do a short-term rental. By opening this up, you're, you're affording other people that couldn't normally make money in the real estate industry, in what they're doing, they can now. And whether it's a lot or not, who cares? It's it's money in their pocket that on these slim times when rents are super high and you know you go away for a weekend and you wanna make up the money that you're losing because it's an empty apartment sitting there. Why not afford people this? And I think it's a great idea. I, I can't believe that, that there's that many places that are actually on board with this because you'd think you know, the big corporations are like, oh, well, I could be making this money. I don't want to let them make this money. And what if, what if? So there's a lot of what ifs. There's some security things that, that this could cause. But I think in the long run for other people to be making money off of things that they're renting is, is a cool idea. So one important note is that these are all primary occupied apartments. Uh -huh. You can't just say, yeah, I want to lease this apartment and then go live halfway across the country and say, I'm just going to rent this out for 30 uh, you know, days out of the month. There are specific guidelines. Like for instance, Arlington has a couple different buildings. You can only rent out the apartment for 90 days, which breaks down to about seven days per month. So maybe if you do go away every single weekend, you could hypothetically you know, rent it out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, something like that. But my other question, Sean, is if I am a renter and renting in an apartment building, I don't think that I want to rent in a hotel. I don't think I want to rent next to a transient type of property. Do you have, loaded question, do you have any experience living in an apartment quasi building where there were apartments and short-term rentals? Where there were apartments and, why is this? Maybe in, in Boston, you lived at a, at a short-term 
uh, oh, I did. Hotel. Yes, I did live at one. That was awful, man. <laughs> Why was that awful? Well, I mean, uh, the people above us, the first thing is that building was not built very well. It was a wood construction building. I heard every noise above me. And, and honestly, there were people, I think Wait, they no, were- Wait, no, I'm talking about in Boston, not North Boston. Oh, in Boston. So Didn't in you Boston, live? Windsor Plaza. Oh, I did there as well. Yes, okay. So help me out. I, I, Am I going right. crazy? No, you're not. All right. So when I was going through, I went through a couple different transitions with my house and then with the, with the house I bought. So there were a couple different places I had to live short term. I lived in Y Hotel. Okay. Right. What is Y Hotel? Y Hotel is short version. Short term. Uh, so it's an apartment building that uh, was at the time wasn't full. So what did the owner do is they said, all right, Y Hotel, we're going to have you come in and you're going to rent out certain units, certain floors as hotel rooms or, or short, longer term stay. So I would stay in them for maybe a week or two weeks uh, during this process. So it was a really cool idea. It was a brand new place, really pretty um, furnished. And so they were subletting from, from the original owner as a hotel to us. So they just sublet a block of rooms, yeah. essentially, like you would if you're having like a wedding at, at, a, at a hotel. That's exactly it. It was a really cool thing. And I was like, why is this not more prevalent in, in other areas, especially the new buildings when, you know, when they build them from the ground up and you got to think there's a vacancy rate that's pretty large and it's hard to get these things running and going. So why not take, hey, these three floors are going to be to Y Hotel and we're going to rent them as hotels. Now we're seeing, hey. Airbnb now, instead of going Y hotel route, they could just do the Airbnb thing for a while until, but okay, go ahead. I was going to say there's probably local zoning laws that don't allow them to, to Airbnb as much as they would like. Sure. When you were at Y hotel, which was a hotel company that would sublet and live in, you know, other apartment buildings, essentially, did you have any interactions with renters? Did you get any notices um, about conduct about Y Hotel, about the short, what I'm trying to understand is, are the renters in these buildings that are, have short-term ocu occupants, are they just fed up with the process? Because in my opinion, if I'm leasing a, a brand new apartment and if I'm a renter moving to a new town and you're telling me I got to live next to a bunch of Airbnbs, a, a bunch of people that, you know, are, are here one week, gone the next, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, that, that is a downside. And, um, Honestly, when we were in the Y Hotel, uh, it was a big high rise. We one stipulation was we were not allowed to use any of the amenities. <laughs> so you're you're not allowed to go to the pool. Like you're a not second rate gym. citizen. Yeah, I was uh, I was I had to have handcuffs. No, <laughs> um, but that was. But you have to think on your on your side of things. It's like, well, do we want all these transient people using our facilities that these renters are paying for? You know, they're really paying for it on the long term. We're just a short term person. So. I think it's fair, honestly. I mean, you know, did I really need to use the gym while I was there? No, just go to the gym down the street. So, um, I don't know. Let's I, get yeah. Let's yeah. get back to um, Airbnb. So yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to play devil's advocate here because I I think there is some benefit, but at the same time, and in my own personal experience, it's so hard to curate a five star experience for a guest, and then you're going to tell me that you're living in your apartment. And then you're just going to leave for the weekend and expect that your guest is going to have this amazing five-star experience. That to me is, is very difficult because you either have a vacation rental or you have like your normal house. If it's a two bedroom and you're renting out the guest room and you're making 600 bucks, it'll tell you, Airbnb will say, hey, if you're in Arlington, you have a two bedroom in this building, this is how much you can expect to make. That's amazing. But if you're telling me you have a studio, you have a one bedroom, you have a two bedroom where you know both bedrooms are occupied, you're just going to leave for the weekend and expect to deliver a five-star experience, I'm not buying it. Yeah. Okay. There's upsides, right? You could make some money. There's downsides. They're living in your place with your stuff. And to, to secure all your stuff when strangers are coming, you don't know these people. It's all your stuff sitting in the place. Number two, you get home after the two days, you better have a cleaner coming in, right? Cleaning before and cleaning after. And these are things that people don't think about when they start renting their place. You have strangers coming into your place, using your shower, your toilet, your beds, everything. I mean, if you're living there full time and you want them staying on your stuff, all right, maybe uh, I, I personally, I would be like, no way. But Matt has personal experience in the Airbnb realm where, you know, you realize, 
hey, this is passive income, but is it passive income? It's not passive. Don't believe it. <laughs> exactly. Nothing about it is passive. <laughs> Every time I call Matt, Matt's like, dude, somebody broke my toilet. Hey, somebody broke my couch. You know, I got to run down here. So th there are things that come up with this stuff that people don't understand. And there could be a lot of liability that you're putting in, not only to yourself, but to the building. And so I wonder, and I've, there's got to be some sort of contract that, that they're signing. And I'm wondering, is there... Uh, is there benefit for the building itself, the corporation that owns this building? There has to be some sort of A hundred percent. I think we missed out on a big part. Um, yeah. The building can take a certain portion of the the proceeds of the revenue. So I think okay. it's like 20%. Don't quote me on that. But, you know, obviously if a property is on Airbnb, Airbnb is making money. And then if, you know, you go through the Airbnb friendly apartments, um, you, you have to register with the building and they, they, they take like 20%. I mean, there goes some of your margin right there. Yeah. So everybody's making money, but who's going through the hassle? It's you, you know, you owning that or renting that place that has to have people in there in your private space. I, I don't know. I mean, I can understand it if you're kind of a minimalist or, or you're going away for a week and you want to do it for a few days. Or if you're one of these people that flies back and forth a lot, and there's a lot of them in this area that are transient, they, they come back for a job, but they're like in that transition of like, do I buy something? Do I just rent something? Or do I just do a hotel every time? Well, this could be your option where you say, all right, well, I'll just rent a place. That way I know it's there all the time. And then I'll rent it out as many days as I can during that time frame because I'm not really not going to be there. That's where that, that could be a real big benefit and save you a lot of money in the costs. Sean, my final question that we'll move on after this is... Um, these apartments, uh, you know, companies are now on board. You no longer, if you're living in one of these buildings, have to like sneak around and say like, oh, don't talk to the front desk. Don't mention Airbnb, right. like the lock boxes behind the tree <laughs> on the park fence across the street. You no longer have to be sketchy. Um, so that leads to the next question of, well, if apartments can do it, what about condos? Is this something where it's going to bleed into the condo sector? What do you think? Here and there it will, but for the most part, I don't think so. I think the condo boards have a rule. I mean, you have to vote on this stuff, and I don't think it'll get voted Apartments up. have rules too, and these companies are bigger than an individual condo. Yeah, but I don't know the voting rights on, on who's voting on this and who's making the rules. I mean, when you're owned, you know, you have shareholders, and the shareholders are saying, we just want cash, and we're saying, that hey, we can make you cash. But what benefit does it to have for a condo? A condo is saying, hey, oh, condo fees. Say, hey, you can rent here, but we got to take a portion. You know, that's, that's going to pay for special assessments. You should be. You should that's going to bring down some condo fees. You should start. You know Windsor what? Windsor Plaza you know, needs to pay this attention. Is good. Here. This is good, Matt, because, you know, there, what's happening right now because of the rise in cost of everything. Every condo building that I've talked to is having at least a, they're having an increase, some 10 percent increase in their condo fees. So how do you buck that cost? How do you how do you alleviate that? Maybe that's the way. I don't know. But. I think for the most part, just like you were saying before, do you really want a transient person living next to your home? And we see this all the time, even in single family home neighborhoods. In my old neighborhood of Lake Barcroft, there was, you know, you're right next to a lake. Some of these houses has, have pools. And one of the neighbors was renting it out on Airbnb. And then all of a sudden it got squashed by the, by the HOA saying, hey, we don't want to do this anymore. So you have to start thinking that people own these properties outright. They, I mean, they own them, they live there, this is their home. And when you have a hotel-like situation right next door and, and you're sharing a wall, um, you're probably mostly gonna be against it. I don't know where that line draws as far as, you know, what the majority would have to be. Would it be a simple majority or a super majority to actually vote that in? I don't know, you know, but I think it's, it's tough to get in. Now, if you do know one, in the Arlington DC metro area that does allow Airbnbs, let me know because we have buyers that are specifically looking for condos that they can Airbnb. Again, primary residence, so that could be a hiccup, but yeah. if you're a condo association or owner, I don't think it should be a definite no. I think you should have the conversation and, and maybe then say no, yeah. but at, at least hear out the pros and cons, especially if you're going through any sort of financial situations involving special assessments involving increasing your condo fees yeah these are changing times and it's it's cool it's it's funny to see how you know hotels are being impacted by this but how things can change in a money aspect in a renter's aspect on a homeowner's aspect and how you can alleviate some of these costs it's 
just a neat way of uh, thinking outside the box. All right, let's move on to our next topic. This comes to us from ScreenRant.com. What a website. I This website just looks like page six-ish. <laughs> yeah. 90 Day Fiance, why Kara's real estate advice really riled up fans. Kara Roher is a talented real estate agent based in Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, wow. She's, my new neighbor. Yeah. She's um, down there, huh? But her recent home buying advice didn't sit well with many 90 Day Fiance fans. So Kara uh, Roher uh, published a video on Instagram. It is a seven second video. You've seen many of them if you've uh, opened up Instagram from Realtors. It basically says, dear renter, if you are renting, you are paying a mortgage, but it's not your mortgage. And then the video ends. That's it. That That's all it is. 5,700 likes. We we do back we jump in pools and we don't we don't get fifty likes so maybe <laughs> know, we should on, maybe, maybe we should go on TV maybe we should just give simple advice right? maybe maybe I should marry a uh, no I'm not gonna finish that sentence no. my girlfriend's watching <laughs> uh, but I have nothing against Kara um, I don't really care about ninety day fiance what I do care about is insulting renters because it seems like there's this trend on social media where realtors think that renters are just idiots. Like, hey, did you know you should buy instead of rent? Hey, did you know it's actually cheaper to buy? Hey, did you know if you're buying, uh, you're paying your own mortgage instead of your, like, why pay your landlord's mortgage? Well, I got news for you. If you buy a house, you're not paying your own mortgage. You don't own the house. The bank owns the house. You are paying the bank's mortgage. So, my whole thing is, Sean, I don't think we should be treating renters like idiots. I think renters know that they should be buying a house. I think renters know that renting can be a waste of money. I think renters know that they're trying to save for a three and a half percent down payment. I think renters know this. And every Instagram video I see about some sort of renter slander just rubs me the wrong way. Date the rate, marry the house, every little trick that a realtor has up their sleeve. I think it's just a uh, tantamount to a slap in the face to renters out there. Yeah. And we've seen it so many times over and over again. I mean, this statement has said, it been said for 200 years or whatever it is, right? I mean, we've heard it thousands of times. It just takes this person to say it, to get attention. Um, but we all know it. I guess renters all know it. I mean, have I rented? Sure, I've rented. Did I know that I could buy a place and pay down my mortgage? Of course I could, but I couldn't afford to buy where I wanted to buy. Um, and, you know, renters all rent for different reasons. There's good things about renting. You can be transient. You only have to stick for a year, you know. Um, not everybody is built to buy a home. And I think most people know that you're buying, you're paying somebody else's mortgage, whether it's a corporation's mortgage or a private owner's mortgage. Um, Matt, I know you're very, uh, you know, up passionate about this. Um, you rent, you, you've rented in the past. Um, did you know that you're paying your, your, this your is news mortgage? to me. Is yeah. It? I literally did a breakdown. I did a whole video on why I'm renting and, and not buying. And people are like, you're an idiot. You need to move 45 minutes away from everything that you enjoy in life. House hack. Forget about your personal happiness and 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 become a homeowner. Like, how can you be a realtor and you don't own a house? What you need to do is move to West Virginia, then buy a house, and then in three to five years, the appreciation will go up, and then you can sell that house and buy a bigger And I'm like, you need to live outside the spreadsheet, right? Um, you got to you got to do something else. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is you were smart about this, and and a lot of it's funny how there's some people that are ingrained in the fact that hey, I need to buy my first house, I need to live in it, and I need to sell it, and blah blah. blah. And that was me, you know. I I've owned houses here and there, I've sold them, bought, sold, and just taken the equity and rolled it and rolled it, which which worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody. I actually lost on the first one, um, but that's not for everybody. And and there's there's this whole school of thought that is out there that you'd never buy your your home that you're living. You always rent and you buy cash flowing properties and those cash flowing properties will then pay your rent and then you're living for free. And the more you can buy outside that you're not actually living in is cash flow that's coming in and it's free cash flow and you don't have to worry about anything in the future, right? That, so it's money that is coming in for you every month. Whereas 
if you're somebody like, you know, most Americans, you have one house, you have one big mortgage and you're paying for it every month. You could get an Airbnb, start supplementing, get another Airbnb, start supplementing another and another. And then all of a sudden you don't really have a mortgage because all of those other ones are paying your mortgage. So, and I think that's the route that you've kind of taken is, Hey, my first place, your first place is going to be an Airbnb. So smart. You know, if you can get around the fact that, oh, I need to be owning the thing that I'm living in, which a lot of us have, the, the, I think the smarter route actually is to buy an Airbnb first and just start building your wealth. I wanna make this as clear as possible. I believe in real estate and the power of owning real estate, just like I believe in the power of owning Bitcoin. And when I had Bitcoin, what did I do? I had it for a little bit and then I sold it because another opportunity came along in the short-term rental purchase. So I sold the Bitcoin to get the short-term rental property. And now what am I doing? I'm looking for other opportunities to get cash flowing properties so I can get to a point where I can purchase my dream home. I don't want to go out and buy, you know, a, a one bedroom condo when, you know, I, I have an amazing girlfriend that, you know, we're, we're, we're planning, you know, next steps for. I don't want to go out and, and live 45 minutes away from my work. Like not only do I rent in this building, I also go down to the gym and I work out there and I see neighbors, I see potential clients, I see past clients, I see future clients. So it's it's more, I, I mean, I, I guess this is an excuse, but it's more than just renting versus buying. It's like, I, I can, I, I almost wanna ask my CPA if I can write off my rent because the only reason I'm living in this building is so I can farm the building and get listings from it. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got a home office, right? I mean, you should be able to write off your home office. I'm not gonna ask my portion. CPA about, you know, the whole, the entire nut, yeah. but um, yeah. certainly the home office. Um, you know, and that's the thing is uh, real estate agents out there, if, if you're kind of living in an apartment or something, like Matt's strategy was, hey, I'm gonna move into this building and then let's let's take it over. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're you're meeting everybody in there. So it doesn't matter if you own or rent, you just have to have the knowledge on how to make that, you know, make a purchase and, and go through the real estate uh, game. Getting back to the to the topic at hand, I, I think it's as simple as this. No renter has ever loaded up Instagram, saw a realtor dancing about <laughs> why renting is worse than owning and then decided to call a realtor and to buy a house. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's all I got. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to in or out, whether Sean battles in or out on three houses. Sean, let's start in New York City. I know mm -hmm. you love New York City mm -hmm. on Cornelia Street, Taylor Swift. Uh, it is the track, the ninth track of her Lover album. And she used to rent a West Village apartment. Mm -hmm. And that apartment is now up for lease for $45,000 per month. Seems reasonable. So she lived in the West Village um, uh, property on Cornelia Street while she was renovating her $18 million Tribeca property. And then the song Cornelia Street was, uh, this was back in 2016 or so when uh, she was living in this townhouse, which I, I only think she lived for a couple months, but it was allegedly, and Swifties, don't fry me in the comment section, but it was allegedly, you know, around the, the Calvin Harris breakup and then the new BF, the new, uh, the new boyfriend. And she was essentially saying, you know, in the song that she'll never be able to walk down Cornelia Street again if they were to break up. Sean, are you in or out on the $45,000 a month rental? And you have to be Taylor Swift. You, you can't be Sean Battle. Okay, you you have Swift. to be, you know, the, the the songbird of our generation, like literally the, the best entertainer, you know, essentially mm -hmm. arguably out there. Like if, if you have $45,000 a month, that's your budget. Are you in or out on Cornelia Street? I mean, I think I'm in. I, I don't see any reason not to be in. Uh, is it because of the breakup that that is, or is she, I see, I don't know the song. Yeah. So uh, I know it's about Cornelia Street. I heard some of the lyrics, but what is the, the cut? Did you listen to it? Well, she, she was only in the property for a couple months while her Tribeca house was being renovated. Yeah, so, so uh, hey, if I'm Taylor Swift, I'm I'm doing this over and over again because you know why? She just wrote a hit song. 
about this property. And she's going to make millions of dollars just on that one song. It's not her. Uh, she doesn't own it. It's okay. So, like an Italian furniture company owns it. So it, it's essentially like you can also live in the same place that a famous person once lived in for a couple months. Yeah, I like it. I mean, and think about it. Taylor Swift is the biggest draw in the United States right now. She she broke Ticketmaster. I mean, yeah, of course, I'm going to do anything that Taylor Swift has done uh, because I think you can make money off of it for sure. She rented. Yeah. Why didn't she buy it? No, just she kidding. didn't need to. She, okay, she, she, had the, uh, <laughs> she had the $18 million property that she, that she bought. Clearly, it. she didn't see the video no. of this girl telling her that renting is not, you know, you're paying somebody else's mortgage. Anything that Taylor Swift does, I just stamp of approval. Yes. Absolutely. Approve. Absolutely. I hate to bring this up. I used to be that way about Kanye, mm. and I have since had to not blanket approve everything. I've watched you some could Kanye, get, man. He's, you get away yeah. with like liking Kanye up until like 2015, 2016, and then things are like, okay, something, something's not adding up here. Yeah. And so before I was just like, yeah, Kanye's a genius. Now I'm like, Kanye, like, let's talk about this. Maybe some went off the genius schedule. Yeah. But Taylor Swift, she's, she's indestructible. I, I don't know one PR. I, I don't know one word that she said wrong in her entire I life. I mean, she's an amazing artist. Do you know how it's not easy to write the songs she makes and every single one of them. I mean, didn't she have all the top 10 at Probably. one time? It was the, the first time in history. I mean, like when you're talented like that and you can write songs and you've got a great voice, I mean, that that doesn't come off that often. And she's just a superior talent. So Cornelia Street, West yeah. Village Love of it. Manhattan. I, I don't know if, if there's a better neighborhood i mean you can you can make arguments you know chelsea's cool you can go to the upper upper east side is cool and whatnot but honestly if, how do these people walk around though how do you walk around as taylor swift i don't think in the west can. village like do you enjoy life at all outside i mean that's got to be so difficult anyways i mean literally in the song it's like walking down cornelia yeah, street. she didn't like, walk down cornelia yeah, street anyways she, she, down cornelia she street. barely stepped outside of her door because security is on like security. both sides of the street yeah so taylor you never you never I walk am, down anyway i am so in on cornelia, uh, cornelia street i'm in all right let's go across the pond to uh, london sean okay who um i've been there a few times i saw a TikTok video where they were interviewing london uh they were interviewing england soccer fans Wow. Not football fans. They were interviewing England soccer fans. Oh, wait. And they said, w the question was, which United States men's soccer player would start for e the England team? All the England fans said, none, none of, them. of them. None of them. Well, zero, zero draw. So how's that, London? How's that, mm -hmm. England? Wall Street Journal. Inside the 290 square foot London cottage that's asking $1.4 million. Sean, after a $470,000 renovation, the owner put the Georgian style house on the market. It is the smallest detached property on the market. Sean, are you in or out on 290 square feet in the Chelsea neighborhood of London? I'm out, dude. How's um, your, how's your London quick file? Out. My London file, I've been there. I can't remember where the heck I was, but I've been there, uh, I think, four times. Uh, I like London. London's, London's a cool cool town. Um, I would not buy this. And the, the problem here is that that, that owner put $475,000 into how many square feet? 290. What did they do that cost $470,000? So it's two levels, Okay. which... I think I'm out on that because if you're thinking 290 square feet, then you got to put a staircase in there yeah. somewhere. You're you're so cramped in. Man, how how big is this room? This is like a 12 10. by. This is 120. So yeah. so it's double this room. So you you walk in. There's like a small kitchen. There's like a a, a little bed a couch area, and then you go up some st some stairs, and you're upstairs. Does it say what that 400 and what was it 475 thousand dollars? Yeah. Man, so he bought the cottage. Uh, he bought the they, they call it a cottage. This is I guess it is a cottage um, for eight hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Put the money into it and now asking one point four. Yeah. I mean, he's going to make maybe one hundred two hundred thousand dollars. The risk is so big on this. No, I wouldn't do it because who's going to pay that much per square foot? I wonder. I don't know the computation right now, but that's a big dollar per square foot. You've been to London in the summer. It is a hotbed for. Yeah. Uh, tourists with a lot of money, specifically um, 
from like oil countries that have just like f u money yeah so yeah. it is well it's a big place for for russians to park their cash it's a big place for people from the middle east to park their cash mm -hmm. i'd want probably more than 290 square feet if i'm parking yeah my that's cash. the thing is, is if they're parking cash they're parking a lot more than that i think but I don't know. Uh, I think the easy answer is that I'm out. I think uh, way too much price per square foot. Sometimes you put a little bit too much into properties. People go nuts, like we saw with the one, right? The one out in California. It's like, I'm going to build this and this and this. And they just keep going and they keep going because they have this vision, but they can't get beyond their vision because it's costing too damn much. And now they're stuck with a property that is over, under value, over expensed. And I think that's what they did. So uh, I'd be curious to see what it actually sells for, if it sells, and I'm out. All right, let's finish it up and go back to uh, the United States. Okay. Land of the brave, home of the free. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Yeah. Land of the free, home, home of, of the, the brave. brave. Is that what you said? I, no, I you said, said it wrong. Opposite. Well, anyways, freedom. So <laughs> this is a converted church in New York, in Guilford, mm -hmm. New York. It is a studio with one bathroom, 1,700 square feet, Sean. There's the outside of the church. We may have done a church video in the past, but wait till you see the inside of this property once I get through the 10 exterior photos. Boom, look at that. Church is in session. You got your own little bar right there. You have a dining area. In terms of studio apartments, if you can call this an apartment, there's your, uh, your sleeping quarters. I don't know if I've seen a studio that's been larger than 1,700 square feet. Have you? I don't think I've seen a larger um, studio a than studio. this. Sean, are you in or out on the converted church that is 359 in Guilford, New York? So out. So oh, out. Oh, come on. No. I, the, the thing is, I church is church, and like I can't live in church. And it looks like you're walking into a church. I mean, that's, it is, it's an old church. It's not like they did anything different to it. You're walking into the church, the steeple, it's going in. And then it's this big open space. The only thing that's gone is the pews and the altar, right? Now you just throw a kitchen on this side. And uh, it just reminds me too much of being in church and getting slapped by nuns. And you know, like my, my, my youth. Is uh, this like sacrilegious? Like if someone really religious saw this church and saw the inside would they think it's like a disgrace to the the faith it, it could be because this was a house of god i mean and now it's converted into a single family home I, I guess i mean that's i don't know i would think that it could be you now have a bar in a church but it's no longer a church let me so, ask you this what are the taxes you get zero hey, taxes on do this? i get yeah if that's the case well, i'm buying <laughs> Start your own do church I still in get, here. Hey, it's, it was a church. Is it so still zoned for a church? Yeah. Hey, I'm getting zero. No, uh, you're zero on something there, buddy. On, on could this. we have? Could we say, hey, I pray in here every night. I still consider this a church. I need the, the tax write off or the the no tax based on the the church. I think that you're onto something, Matt. Maybe you might be able to get away with that. I am so in on this. This is so cool. It's yeah. 1,700 square feet. It's Sean. You have your own bar. You have your own. The bar is cool. The bar is cool. I, mean, I can't. I, I can't, guess then you're drinking in a church. And, yeah, I can't get that's... beyond the whole church thing. I mean, it's still a church. You still got the windows that look like a church. They're not stained glass. It doesn't look like stained glass, but still that look. It looks like a church, man. I'm, I'm not. No, <laughs> you're out. No, I'm. I'm in on on the church. It's in Guilford, which is upstate New York. I guess is it is it weird to just call everything upstate New York if it's not New York City? Yeah, like, I don't yeah, I don't, I, really I don't feel know. comfortable. Click on that map. That. I want to see where that is. Yeah, you. it's it's kind of southeast of um, Syracuse. So okay. if Syracuse was in the middle. Um, this would be at like four, 4 o'clock. Yeah. So I'll zoom out and give you some give you a frame of reference here. It's it's on an acre of land, so you know it's it's on a big big old plot of land, but it is in, you know, the middle of middle of New York. And, and it's still, you know, it's New York. It's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the middle of New York, which, you know, property values aren't aren't big out there. Plus you're buying a studio. Not many people are gonna buy a one room place. That's a church. And me included. So I'm out. I am shocked, uh, not only because you're out, because you didn't mention Airbnb. I'm not allowed to. I got yelled you at. You got called I got out. out. <laughs> I was like, yeah. you can always Airbnb it. Sure. <laughs> if, if I could Airbnb this, but this is this is me personally. Am I buying it? I mean, yeah, this would be a great Airbnb. But I don't think you're going to Airbnb Cornelia Street either. I don't think there's a, a big market no. for a one-night stay for no. $20,000 a night. 
All right, guys and gals, that is our show. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Drop us a comment. Let 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 Sean know what he should be doing more or less of. And obviously, <laughs> if you see something uh, I can do better, always uh, down for some constructive feedback and what you want to hear. We we'd love to hear your input. You know, we come up with these these topics ahead of time. We grab some fun looking properties, and hopefully you uh, you enjoy. Keep watching. All right, that's all. Be sure to subscribe, and until next time, for Sean and myself, take care. Take care, guys.